Once you have your project plan here set up and ready to go, as we went over in all the previous training videos, the least of which to have a list of all the tasks needed to be completed, that is, in order to complete the project goal, which in this case is to create a Spiffy software training manual, and of course over in the Gantt chart we have a list of all the resources next to the tasks that are assigned to, and don't forget to set a baseline to take a snapshot before you begin the project. Again, once you have your project plan set up, remember, it's just a plan, a plan of what you hope to happen versus what actually is going to happen. For example, let's take a look at task 3 here, and let me go ahead and click and drag the split bar over to the right so I can see both the start and finish dates for our task, and then double click really fast so it can do a snap to the closest column, which is the finish column. And, well, you can see that it starts on August the 31st for examine the software by writer 1. Let's say that he's sick and can't come in until the next day. Well, again, we have our plan here versus what is actually happening. So to enter in our quote-unquote actuals, there's another view we can go to to enter those in. In fact, in that view, you'll have the same fields up here as you see here, but with a three-letter prefix of ACT for actual duration, actual start, actual finish, and so on. And the purpose of keeping our defaults, as you see here, from the actuals, is so we can compare between the two, and that can be very telling in our project here, and as a lesson also for future projects of what to do or not to do. Like, maybe we don't want to use Writer1 because he typically starts his tasks late. Now there's a couple ways to entering in your actuals, and we can do it by switching views. So I'm going to come up here and right-click on the view bar and going to the task sheet view. Now in this view, to enter in the actuals, I'm going to change the table. And as you recall, you can right-click on the table header, that uh, empty cell there, and go to tracking. And there you go. ACT for the actual start, actual finish, and you got the actual duration. So if I hover over to the right-hand side of that column header, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, you can click and drag that out so you can actually see the actual duration title for that column. And then I'll do it also for the task. Let me click and drag or double click really fast and it does what's called a best fit. Of course it opens up the gap where the text was wrapping before so I can hover below that in between the two row headers until I can see arrows pointing up and down and click and drag and or just double click really fast and you get the idea. I'll go ahead and clean this up really fast. Okay, there we go, it's clean. Now, in all simplicity, when you want to enter in a progress of a task, like 50%, 75%, or 100%, like let's say for starting the training manual, if there hasn't been any changes to the actuals, like the actual start or finish dates, in other words, we're on target, we haven't started any earlier or any later, you don't have to enter in the uh, plan for the actuals here, because the plan will automatically be pulled in as a default for the actuals if you put in the percent. That way you don't have to type it in, you don't have to do it for both fields, you just do it for one field and it automatically pulls in the plan, 100, hit enter, and there you go. The plan was August 31st for starting the manual. And you can see that whatever cell that you change, if it affects other cells or updates them, it'll highlight it. So remember, these cells used to be NA for not applicable, and it says, okay, since this task has been completed, that means that we're going off the plan, that the actuals will be August 31st, okay? You can do it that way, or let me go ahead and type in zero. You can actually right-click anywhere on that uh, task row, and when you right-click, it brings up the mini formatting toolbar. You can click on the percent complete. Of course, you only get quarter percents instead of being particular, like 33% in the percent column here. Or you can come up here on the task tab to the schedule group, and there you go, 50% or 100%. Let's go down to the next task, and let's say, well, before I go ahead and mark this, let's say 50% complete, notice that the remaining duration is five days. So the duration is a total of five days. If I say 50%, see if this makes sense. You can see 50% complete, and it puts in the actual start date because I didn't type it in. Project assumes that we're going off the default plan. So the default was August the 31st. 50% actual duration so far is two and a half days, but we still have of the five days, two and a half remaining. And then, of course, the actual cost, and then in a five-day work week for the one resource, Rider 1, 20 hours is half of 40, okay? Now, let me go ahead and undo that. So if you just use the remaining duration field as a reference, you're fine. But if you come in here thinking that, actually, we're this percent complete through the uh, task, let me go ahead and say this is how much we have remaining. Don't do it. Because if you do, you're going to update the plan. Now, the plan for the task examine software is five days. 
when I do it this way and I actually adjust the days within the remaining duration field, I'm updating the plan. I just say don't mess with it, just use it as a reference unless you actually intend to update the uh, duration. Okay, so when I hit enter, there you go, now it's four days. And what's interesting about this is that it went from 12 days because we reduced it by one day for the research phase to 11 days. But why did this go from 13 days to 14 days? Why did it increase? You'd think it would reduce it, if anything. Well, it's knowing your project and this project here, which is different from the project exercises we covered in uh, level one. I wanted to change things up a bit so you have something to work with or figure out, as it were. But there's actually over here, let me go to the Gantt chart, right click, and in the Gantt chart you can see the indicator column on uh, task nine, it has a constraint. Now this constraint for task nine says that this task cannot start any earlier than September the 22nd. Well, when one task gets shortened, it creates a domino effect and it wants to bring everybody in. And it does, it brings these two in, but it keeps this one because it can't start any earlier. So when these two get pulled in one day, then it goes from, well, the 13 days to 14 because it's actually stretching it out, keeping this static, but pulling these in. So where it used to be 13 days, these guys get to start a day earlier, but this one still is stubborn and it stays there because of the task constraint, okay? So that's why, again, it went from 13 days because this one won't move up a day, it'll stay put to 14 days. Let's right click and go back to the task sheet, okay? And then if we come over here and again, we change this, the remaining duration from five to four, that's the actual duration of the plan now, and we say 50% complete, then it goes off the uh, plan from four days saying we've actually completed two days, we have a remaining of two days left, and so the cost is $240 for 16 hours, we're halfway through. So again, just remember the remaining duration, don't change anything in it if you don't want to change the plan, otherwise use it as a reference as when you're updating the progress of your task to see how much you have left, okay? We're halfway through and let's say we actually didn't start on the 31st. Let's click in there, click on the drop down arrow and say we started two days later, select that. And then notice the outline phase goes from 14 to 12 days. And so it's, again, we've got that constraint here that's playing along with the changes that we make up here in the effect that now that we're starting later, these two start a bit later. In other words, these two will start closer to the constraint date of this task that can start no earlier than September the 22nd. So the phase for these subtasks here get reduced. So you see the difference between the plan, what you have set, and what is actually happening. Let me go ahead and change this to 100%. Up, 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 up. We're typing 100, hit enter, and there we go. And you want to keep an eye on this, that you want to make sure that what you enter in here reflects the desired changes you want to see over here. That's one thing to keep in mind, especially if you forgot about the remaining duration field and you're like, now what happens if I change this here? If it already has days in it, like the next one, four days, it'll actually update the plan's duration, okay? You can also mess with the hours over here if there's 32, and let's go down to 20 hours and hit enter. Notice that the uh, actual work, what we type in here, reflects the percent complete. Because we reduce the hours, it says, okay, 63% is complete. So you got the formulas going back and forth between these cells. What you select here for complete will reflect the work and the work vice versa for percentage here. And then type in 100, and we've completed that task. And then of the task summary for these subtasks here, you can see 40% overall has been completed with this task being completed. And we've got the actual duration of 4.4 days. And then not to leave you hanging until a couple of training videos later, but when you start marking these complete here, well, we covered this in an earlier training video. Over in the Gantt chart, if you come over here and right click on the view bar and go to the Gantt chart, and let me scroll over, you can see the uh, progress line for the task. When the black line goes all the way through, it's at 100% complete. You can see in the pop up down below it says 100% complete. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.